Toy Tractor Times is at the 2019 Lafayette Farm Toy Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're here with Chris Steve, a farm toy fan favorite. Chris has built a lot of farm displays over the years, high detail. Actually, Chris, you're trending on YouTube when I'm doing the tags and things for videos. It's good to put Chris Steve in there because people like to watch your work. Uh, Chris, you've got a nice, you always do Oklahoma displays and you've got another nice farm here. And we can see the work that Chris has put into this homestead. It's a little bit different. It's not a big fancy modern farm, but it's a farm using a lot of vintage equipment and keeping all the machines going. And I guess we'll take a tour here with you. Yeah, I, you said nice farm. I don't know if that quite can be the term. This is definitely me having a little bit of fun with doing some more run, rundown, a little more realistic type stuff. You know, everything on here was me having fun doing some weathering and just, you know, taking the shine out of stuff. There is, you see, as we'll go along, there is one new tractor that is getting delivered. Um, today is what was happening on the farm. The farm would be is a simple uh, farm owned by a uh, First Peoples person or Native American gentleman, a friend of ours it's kind of based after. He does uh, some small grains being beans and wheat and a little bit of uh, uh, milo and such but mo and mostly he sells hay. He also raises goats and chickens. He does have one or two cows around that he keeps for butcher to put in his own freezer and he does have one horse that he comes out and helps other local ranchers right round up their cattle. Um, well, let, let's take a look at the display. And again, when I say nice, this is something I've always wanted to do myself and haven't had, I guess, the courage to do, is to weather it, to make it look really used and abused. And it's going to be exciting to take this tour with you, Chris. Chris, we're going to take a look at this rustic Oklahoma farm. And uh, it looks kind of like their homestead in the property here. Uh, tell us about the kind of the standout pieces. Something I really noticed right away was this John Deere 6030 with a Walden blade and the centerfold disc. Yeah, Lee Johnson did that beautiful 6030 for me. Uh, it's a Wheatland. It does not have, it has hydraulics and a uh, heavy duty draw bar. There is no three points or anything on it. it. Has the Wheatland fenders, open station, and a canopy. The disc is one of uh, Jason uh, Showerman's 3D printed kits that I detailed up a little bit more and added um, and added the weathering and painted up the way I wanted. Kind of that mid 1970s uh, yellow framing and it yeah, looks great there. I've always been in love with the bifold John Deere disc because as a kid I had that 1 16th Massey 1155 and had the Ertl, you know, bifold disc and I thought in a sandbox I was big farming. Um, it does fold down, the landing gear does appropriately work so it can be positioned out in the field. It's a nice 3D printed kit that can be had for a reasonable price off Shapeways. It's a good starting point for those of you looking to get into uh, doing some 3D printed kit projects. And tell me about the blade on it as well. The blade on it was just, I, I've seen a lot of them in Oklahoma through you know the whole wheat belt up. They use them for everything from doing pushbacks on center pivot irrigation to, I mean, they're actually, like I said, a silage packing design blade, but so it was just something different that I saw and I wanted. Um, and it gave it a cool effect, you know, just a high horsepower tractor that makes it multi-purpose at that point. So we've taken a look at the 6030 with the Walden Dozer, and behind it we have a vintage kind of style barn, a lot of tin work, and I really like this uh, grain bin here with the shed built on the side of it, kind of a unique structure. Uh, what did you do to kind of create all this effect? Um, the little granary itself it would be, you know, they swear he's probably got the grain for the goats and such like that in it. Um, it's actually a new guy. Uh, I think he just got on to Toy Tractor Times and uh, Instagram and such. It was He actually 3D printed little feed bin um, and then I built a little granary around it. Got some Jensen's buckets and have some feed additional feed bags on the inside of it. The barn itself uh, Tony Dixon did for me a few years back. It's been on my St. Louis display. That was that was a throwback to this display was always meant to be built. It's actually a pair of rail cars, one solid box car that would be have hay storage and such in it for the horses, and then one stock car that you'll get a better angle of here that is open and ventilated so that the horse can get in and out and um, always get some nice ventilation. Well, that's a really cool concept, and I can see the ho the saddle inside there. Yeah. But that's really neat to use those old rail cars to actually build a barn. You got solid walls and and as you travel around, cheap construction. Yeah, as you travel around the country, I've actually seen more than one that's actually been done that way. 
Uh, it looks like we got an old weathered uh, cattle trailer yeah. parked yeah. in there. His, uh, his cattle trailer for hauling with Major Lotus parked back here. That's a uh, actually a, a laser cut kit from um, Lockwood Angus. Um, they're another nice one, like I said, nice starting point kit that I weathered up to the point that it's just about rusted out. They, He's replaced it for most of his work with a little uh, small bumper pole that's from Top Shelf Replica. That, like I said, all I've done to that one is just put a little patina on it as well. So it looks like uh, we got a cow back here. Yeah, or well, bull. But yeah, that's a, uh, like I said, that was one done by Russ Pryor. Uh, he made me some bramers. Um, next to it's a stock tank that was done up by Dan Meyer, the model farmer, for me. Um, that he weathered up and such. It's one of his 3D prints off his Shapeways page. Yes, and we see the horse here eating out of a pretty beat up uh, round wheel feeder. Yep. That's uh, one of Aspen Castings uh, crazy horses. I tell you what, it's hard for me to keep up with all the people doing these details. It's uh, <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the goats. This so we is lead in, neat. yeah, we lead into one of his main. Uh, cash products which is he does some goat production for meat they're all meat goats of all different sizes and shapes um, for their house they have an old school bus that's been converted and they just fill it full of straw and there's plenty of place for them to get in out of the rain so does someone have to go in there with a pitchfork every once in a while yeah and it, would it, have to, it would require it to be cleaned out probably you know at least once a week if not once every couple weeks or I'm sure it would get that so it looks like there's an old building foundation here yeah my concept with this one was that this place people keep asking me to do an Oklahoma displays if there's ever been a tornado on one so this would have been something that a tornado would have hit at some time and stuff just didn't get rebuilt which was probably the old goat barn he just moved the school bus in okay um, and you got that ramp going up in there this yeah. is really cool I mean, it looks like a you know petting zoo kind of set up or yeah. goats and and if you've ever been around goats, they love to climb and jump on stuff. I was just checking the top of the roof to see if there yeah, was one no, up on top of the bus. not up that high. Oh, that looks good. Well, let's take a look at some more of the equipment here on the display. Uh, tell me about these trucks parked here next to the goats. So we lead into the farms to main grain trucks. One setup that Chris Putnam did for me that a lot of you have seen on Instagram. As a, it's In the springtime, it'll be used as a fertilizer and seed tender. And then they actually pull the pull that applicator stuff out of it and use it as a grain truck in the fall. It has the the actual tube to be folded out to fill up the grain drills. So what, what happens is you put your fertilizer yeah. in one compartment. Fertilizer goes up here and your wheat seed or whatever goes back yeah. here. And then you tilt it back into yep. the auger and it goes through that tube, tube yep. right under the fertilizer. It's a cool truck. Classic Dodge truck. Tell me a little bit about that because that's, that's uh, actually a Matchbox truck. Yeah, this actually started life as a Matchbox King size uh, D800. It comes with a pair of double dump trucks. Um, he stripped it all down, put clear cab glass and an interior in it because it's a Matchbox that didn't have that. Um, next to it is one of the top shelf replica 4300s with a scratch built uh, grain bed from Christian Oyster that he did for me and weathered up as well. Yeah, look at that weathering in there. That's so realistic. And big old international truck out front. So those would, like I said, those would be the farm's main two um, grain trucks or, you know, straight trucks. Next to it's a little Chevy pickup that I did. That this is actually how he hauls his goats to market. Is he normally okay. he just takes them in eight or so at a time. Gotta like those classic white top Silverados. Yeah, it's nice. This one's actually a Sierra. It's a GMC. Oh, uh, <laughs> I always get caught. Peter builds Kenworths, Chevys, GMCs. Um, you got a nice fancy new truck new here. New Silverado, and that's actually, as you know from my journals and stuff, Model Farm Monday, that's Warner, Warner Trucking's new pickup. That's one of the new green light ones that I actually put one of Tyson Shores, uh, 3D printed ranch hand front and rear bumpers on. Gives it more of the western ranch look to it, making it a tough truck. Nice, yeah, we saw Tyson's OK Corral uh, system set up at St. Louis. St. Louis, yep. Very good. Yep. Well, those are some good-looking trucks. Well, let's take a look at some more of the equipment on this side yeah, of the trees. Swing around to the. So Chris has a variety of classic implements lined up here along the fence row, kind of using as a weather break, uh, kind of shade some of the key implements on this farm. Chris, let's uh, start out with some of the tillage tools over here. We've got an IH uh, field cultivator. Yeah, that's one of the ones from Farm Factor 3D. Another, like I said, simple, easy to put together kit. Um, good place for you to start if you want to try into doing some of your own building it does fold down um, more than any display I've ever done this one I really thought or put some thought into the size of the equipment for what the display was 
Um, from there we lead into a uh, little pole type uh, liquid fertilizer applicator that's just got some knives to, um, like I said, knife in some fertilizer and then from there we go into an a, uh, international chisel plow. Um, that's another 3D printed kit off of Shapeways. I think he calls himself Huff's Customs. Um, and like I said, everything I just gave a little bit of a weathered look like it because it's obviously stored outside. So You sure know how to piece. find the cool stuff, that's for sure. Um, then we got a John Deere drag. Um, it, like I said, same way, comes down, go down the road properly, folds out. It's got the, I've added the cable. Of course, it's going to hang up on me now, but I added the cable trips to it. Yeah, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the real thing. Just like not, the real not thing. top condition. And we've been seeing that on your model farm Mondays on Toy Talk. Yeah. And then it leads into a, a, a Gale type uh, five, or seven wheel rake. Um, I use one on Professor Johnson's display as well. This one I just made a little rougher. In real life, me, in real life, me and my brother have a, a seven uh, wheel Gale rake, and it's a real nice one. I like how it folds and such. Cool. So I had Denny Wagner draw up the file for me that's available on Denny's uh, Shapeways page. And then my favorite thing, I just always like New Holland hay bines. And this, uh, is this a 489? Yeah, 489. That's actually an Ertl that I customized. Um, Denny did, drew up the uh, reel for me. I actually just moved the rollers, the roller conditioners back to where they're supposed to be. Did scratch build a actual adjustable hitch. The running gear does go up and down. Um, and then from there, I just kind of I added the plate and the weed bar. Gave it that patina look that most of them get that pinkish hue to them after sitting outside but oh that's a good looking mower for a vintage piece a vintage piece and it's yeah. appropriate for this size farm you know Absolutely. instead of a nice new disc mine well let's go over and see the tractors that run all this equipment yeah. so we're over here at another building and this is kind of the farm's tractor lineup so we saw those smaller implements and now we're going to take a look at the tractors you kind of in that 100 105 horsepower range for a lot of the tractors on this farm uh, let's take a look at the white 2105 up front here first. Yeah, to uh, tease Jason, it's the nice new piece that he's got come out this year at Toy Tractor Times. However, I had to Massey Ferguson it up. This one actually has the turboed version of the 354 Perkins in it um, out of a 2705 Massey. There's one on Tractor House, a real one. So, you know me, I gotta have a Massey on here. But of course, I Chris's, make it really different this Chris's time. philosophy is you are not going to win a major contest without a Massey Ferguson tractor on it. And you can see he added that muffler to the, the side. The muffler's been aside and it actually has the turbo sticking out the side of it now. Now well, that looks pretty cool and unfortunately whites, they were argent silver. They were painted to look like a sports car but 40 years later they didn't hold up too well with that no, silver they, paint. they get kind of a grayish look to them but it's still kind of neat and painted in. The nice thing about this is this is a real nice priced unit where you can use it as one of your first weathered pieces and not be out, you know, a hundred bucks into it. So have some fun with them, guys. From there, we jump into the, uh, we got a, the farm has a, a 2094 made out of a hurdle. Uh, I removed the bump up uh, for, I guess, where the turbo would be, made it the flat hood version. It would just basically be used as one of, it's probably hooked to the, on this farm, hooked to the round baler the most. Um, That's really cool to see a Canopy Rops 2090 case and you can see they had that special framing when they were that open platform and a really neat part of the 1970s, early 80s. From there, some of the other equipment on the farm outside of tractors is their, the farm square baler. It's one of Tim Holker's 3D printed 303 kits. Um, Good old Alice Chalmers baler. Yeah, it's still working so he hasn't replaced it yet. Um, we move a little further down the line, and she's not running right now, but the farm to create themselves some more horsepower. There's a 1206 that they repowered with a 3208 cat in it. Um, That's you, a Franken tractor. That if is I ever a saw. major Franken tractor. The additional fuel tank, which is just a barrel stuck out on front, some wheel weights and such, you know, for ballast. It's a, like I said, it's something special, but it worked for the farm for a few years. I'm guessing that gets out on that chisel plow or field cultivator and goes to work. Yeah, it would be, the, it'd be one of the farm's heavy tillage tractors would be its sure. only real purpose in life. Now, another nice implement here is a Case IH and an international tandem drill set with a custom hitch. Yeah, those are a pair of Eric Peterson's 5100s. Um, I did one up as an IH and one up as a Case IH with a grass seeder on it. Um, and then I scratch built the tandem hitch for it. Um, it is not based after the Case IH, it is based after an aftermarket version I found that somebody had just listed up on the internet. But it does its job and it's designed to 
you know, so that when it is in the field, it folds out, the axles pivot around, and everything lines up to give you the full, I don't remember if it's a 20 or 24 foot swath, but it definitely makes it a nice one, and it, it's appropriate to be pulled by 150 or 100 horsepower tractor. And we can see how you weathered to the IH, you know, you can see where the hands have lifted that lid many a time and worn off the paint. And then you mentioned the grass seeder attachment, which is on the Case IH, and that's that black box across the front, and it's hooked on the back so you can seed grass. So you can, yep, you can break it free to plant, to plant new hay fields and such like that. And then sure. hook it back up to put the weed in. I notice you have different disc uh, closures on the back of them as well. Yeah, it was, uh, it was actually, the biggest reason for that was some spacing it and such like that, and also uh, this one. Different, different generation, Different generation. So we looked here at the grain drills and we can see the old tender truck, another old Dodge. What model truck is this on the Kilbros? Uh, that's a D600 uh, with a Kilbros, like I said, with an auger pillar on it. That would have been the farm's old uh, seed tender and such before they got the newer Dodge with the fertilizer attachment as well. And um, then we've got a bunch of other older yeah, trucks just, and just junk back here. I guess this is beyond repair or waiting for restoration. Probably a little bit of both. I mean, he has intentions of maybe fixing it one day, but it, as most of us know in the real world, most of it will just stay there till scrap prices get high enough that it'll probably get shipped out. And there's some other scrap metal and barrels and such. And, um, but there's a lot of people every day that come down to the Oklahoma area and look through the old farms for old trucks because they don't rust as bad and such to sure. bring back up north to restore. And that looks like we got an old, is that a Scout or a Jeep there? Uh, Bronco. Bronco, okay. Yeah, actually Bronco. And then an old semi-trailer? Yeah, the, se there? the semi-trailer is actually, the pair of them is where he's got hay stored in. One has first cut and second cut. When we swing around the other way, you'll see the barns are actually, they use them as barns. They're marked up as first and second okay. cut hay. And speaking of the hay, I'm gonna just swing around over here and it looks like you've got an old flat just rack uh, flat hay, rack wagon. hay wagon. But the, the main way the farm picks up their hay and puts it into these things is with what's commonly known as an Oklahoma hay monster. Um, it's they're made out of old school bus chassis. Um, they have a they have the chain link to you actually drive around to the field. One guy's driving and two guys are stacking, and you actually line up, pick up the bales. It chains up to here, and you just stack your pile as you go. And then when you get back to your hay mow. You actually can do this, just reverse the chains, the guys drop them down on it, and it shoots them up into the barn. Um, Lockwood Angus, uh, Sean Lockwood made that for me. Oh, that's um, cool. I got to use one one time in the state of Oklahoma and I swore I'd never do it again. It looks a little risky. So. Yeah, it's, it's something special. <laughs> well, let's walk around here and take a look at the uh, front of the shed. Let's take a look at the front of this equipment shed. We've got some more machines. Uh, Looks like a uh, old New Holland round baler there with the chains. Yeah, the old chain drive style. Uh, it's still working for the farm, so they still use it. Um, that was made by Zach out of, I believe, and I'll apologize, I think he's in North Dakota. He's on Toy Talk. Um, posts like sits and pictures of it. He made one of those up for me, and I think, Jason, you got one too. I did get one. That's a pretty cool build. Yep. Um, next to it, and as you can see, as the farm grew, um, they actually used to have a 55 deer combine. It got replaced by a newer M2 Gleaner and they had to add on to the shed because it was a bigger machine. Um, this is one of Tim Holker's kits. Um, it's real nice. Like I said, it was easy to put together. It's got some of Chucky Stephenson's wheels and tires on it. Um, it has the detail of the grain bin extension. Well, look at that. Go up. And so does the loading auger as it, like I said, as the grain goes on top of the main unloading moves for the thing. It also, one night detail that he did, it does have like the real gleaners, the straw spreader can move back and forth for if you want to make straw or if you are just spreading it. Wow, that's yep. nice. Very realistic. And then the headers at back yep. on, the, on the side. So like there. I said, there's no corn on here, so all it's got is a, a non-flex head, 20-foot head. Good old flat bat header. Yep. And once again, like the rest of them, I just gave it a little weathered look, you know, to make it a little more realistic for the farms, you know fact that it's mostly all used equipment. From there we go into another one of Tim's pieces with one of Sean Lockwood's loader kits on it. It's a nice uh, uh, 185. It can also be done as a 180. Um, has the appropriate, there's no more fuel tank in the back. Um, just a nice little, like I said, it's used to load around with the spike of the hay. I do have that uh, can take on and off. Um, Lee Johnson did me a, another canopy top for it. It's those. nice when you're sitting out in the sun. Yep. It's hot out there. Um, from there, we got one of the new 
uh, green light, little 5610s with also one of Sean's loaders and a drop stop put on it. I, all I did to this one is change out the rear tires. Not that there was anything wrong with the stock ones. Green light did a great job on these. Just the one I was looking at had the uh, 34 inch rims instead of the 38s on it. So I wanted to go with that. I like that weathered roof too with the rust and the Ford loader. Yeah, they, they commonly rusted right between that the two support rails real bad. And so that was the look I wanted to go for. And so, well, let's take a look at the rest of the farm over here. We come across the farmyard here. We can see uh, older building. It looks like maybe more rail cars or semi trailers. Uh, semi cargo containers, actually. Yeah, that's so. This would have probably got destroyed about the same time. The foundation's still there. Instead of building a new shop, he actually just bought two of the cargo containers and turned it into a shop. Um, and they actually, there's a lot of guys using it because they're good dry, watertight storage on the inside. And as one of his hobbies, he does have a drag car and motorcycles and so it's got all the normal shop tools there's welders and uh, air compressors and battery chargers a couple workbenches and a you know regular shelf he does have an old Ford in there that's having some axle problems and it's sitting up on blocks that he's working on well, that's really cool and the foundation you can kind of see the rubble yep. rock out there fuel tank all undercover and we can kind of follow the tornado path across the farmyard to right get where that goats right. were. So it's an unfortunate part of life in Oklahoma. But part of the reality, like yep. so that's why I mean you can like so that was my concept was that so that's why even the, the new horse barn and stuff that would have been an old one has been replaced by a pair of rail cars. Yep. And uh, and a shorter grain bin that less likely to get blown over in high winds. Oh, like this. It, well, tell me about this truck here that's kind of rusted on the side. Um, this would just be one of his, you know, a guy likes Dodge pickups. It's just made to look like, you know, um, just a rusted out, you know, four-wheel drive pickup that he probably takes to town. Being sticking with the Native American theme, you know, I put a dream catcher and a couple feathers and such on the front of it. Um, oh, looks good. Now let's take a look at the chicken coop over here. Yeah, this was kind of a fun build. The scratch built out of just some scrap styrene and some wood. I, well, if you pan down, Jason, you can see I've got some separate meat layer pins on the outside of the wood. Um, a little bit lower. Um, and it's also like it's got the two little entry points for chicken. These are actually some nice HO ones I found. A little less money than the Ertl ones and actually truer to scale for what a chicken actually is in our size. Oh, they, it looks great. They just all this can't copy enough, compliment you enough on all these buildings, the way they're weathered and the way it flows. And now uh, we'll come around, I'm going to show the back side of uh, the house here, and it looks like it's uh, kind of a trailer with a roof built over the top. Yeah, it's, it's something you commonly see, it's a single wide trailer, it's something you commonly see all over the Southland, uh, where they've taken the trailer and the roof, you know, maybe had some issues, or they wanted to cool it off more, so they put just a carport over the top of it. So. Uh, but it also gives them a nice little, at that point, gives them a nice covered porch for in the evenings where you see I've got some chairs and some tables for his friends and stuff just to sit around and complete talk. with AstroTurf grass. Complete with AstroTurf grass. Um, also one of Jensen's uh, towers for the uh, television and one of his uh, satellite dishes. Um, Very nice. Jen Jensen Diecast has a lot of little detail pieces on this display. Now, he, Jen Jensen Diecast is really equipped with display. And you can see there's even a dumpster over here for trash pickup. Yep. And Once again, that's one of the ones from the guy out in uh, Utah. He did that. He did the nice, really nice propane tank. A lot of people have commented about those this weekend. Um, like I said, if you get to my Instagram, which is the at Redlands Oklahoma, and you send me a direct message, I'll send you a link right to his page, as well as I'll do a shout out this week for him on, uh, like I said, the nice stuff he does. I always think we got a Jeep and a pretty nice looking. Yeah, pickup. one thing he does have nice and new on the farm is he does have a newer pickup and like I said, has a Jeep for going out and playing in the mud. Oklahomans like to, you know, when they do get rain, they like to go out mud and that's probably what the old Dodge pickup was used for, but he's got a Jeep for it now. Good. I like how you have the power lines. Uh, they come right into the farm here okay. through the trees and hook up the house and the buildings right out to the shop. Has the power line as well as the phone line running around. Um, you know I had to put some type of phone and communication stuff on it as a shout out to my loving wife for the support sure. she has in letting me do this hobby that we all enjoy so much. Now as we come down the driveway here through the, the trees I see there's a sign right there. Yeah, it's actually, so a lot of times when he's out and about, people will still stop in and buy hay, and it's got a, just a, basically a phone number that you can call and tell what you took and, you know, how much you took and, you know, kind of an honor system. 
Um, it's got the first and second square bales and round bales for sale, and that has the prices on it. Okay. Um, so now, the finale here that we've... The finale, uh, yeah. The, the, the looks farm. like the local dealership has shown up. What's the name of the dealership? Sites Equipment. Sites um, Equipment. That will be one of my next national displays will actually be an equipment dealership I'm doing. So this is kind of a... So we're getting a preview. Sneak, yeah, getting a preview or sneak peek for you. Easter egg, as they yeah. say in the movies. They are... Uh, the farm is getting delivered a newly used and repainted uh, 9190 two-wheel drive that's going to replace the... Uh, 3208 cat in the international uh, a little nicer with some air condition and such like that as he's getting a little older you know and it'll be a nice addition to the farm it's in that you know 180 horsepower that it'll probably ultimately even replace the 6030 and the uh, um, and both of them you know uh, that's a really, I'll tell you, those Deutz Alice tractors, these were built by White Farm Equipment in Coldwater, Ohio, when they were green, and I mean, they're pretty unbeatable. They're a tough, solid tractor from the late 80s, early 90s. What kind of trucks, uh, dealership delivery truck here? Uh, GMC Brigadier, uh, with one of Model Mechanics 3D printed uh, dealership beds on it, and one of his front bumpers as well. Um, the, the, my dealership, the concept is another little, like, city Easter egg would be, that the, far, the dealership until 1985 sold case equipment, and that's why it's in the case uh, tan. Yep, that's um, tan, and you can see the dealership truck. Is that a Chevy there? Yeah, that one's a Chevy. Yep, Chevy. Uh, one ton dually. Looks good. Well, we look forward to seeing that national display. That's a pretty good looking start, and thank you very much for sharing this display here at Lafayette. And I'm going to just pause here for a minute because I got a little presentation for you for all your efforts in the display. All right, thank you. I want to thank Chris for sharing his display here at the 2019 Lafayette Farm Toy Show. But I also want to thank Chris for taking part in ToyTractorTimes.com Toy Talk Bottle Farm Monday. Bottle Farm Monday has been going on for 324 consecutive weeks. It's a big part of our message board. We get thousands of people interacting on Toy Talk. And Chris, I want to thank you because you have contributed to 300 consecutive weeks out of 324. And every time a person posts 100 weeks in a row on Model Farm Monday, they earn a gold set of Toy Tractor Times tractors. And I have our 2018 Gold 2105 cab tractor here. So Chris is going to receive for 100 weeks of Model Farm Monday, one 2105 two-wheel drive and the special edition chasing it in gold with front wheel assist. Chris. Thank you, I know you put a lot of work into that, and it's pretty awesome that you've done 300 weeks of this. Thanks, I enjoy doing them. I hope you guys enjoy seeing them. So, if you want to check out Toy Talk, we hope you do it. You'll see Chris there every Monday.